Welcome to day one of our weightlifting technique. Uh, just a quick reminder, um, if, if we ever really, if you have a barbell, that's great, but I don't think we really need a barbell. There's, uh, there's this premise, you know, the saying in weightlifting that if you can't emulate a snatch or a clean or a weightlifting movement with a PVC or dowel or even a pretend PVC in your hand, uh, like an air PVC, then you aren't ready for a barbell. So starting off with the bare minimum is how, is how we want to do this. And seeing how, um, and seeing how, I'm going to mute everyone. Give me a second. And so, and seeing how, seeing how this is uh, on Zoom, right? This is online. We want to keep it as simple as possible. Um, and also, instead of um, having this be a, um, a less of a workout class, I want it to be far more instructional and educational, right? Because in weightlifting, as you all know, especially those that are more familiar with the weightlifting movements, the snatch and its variants and the clean and its variants, it gets very technical. Um, and for those of you that have never really thought about what you're doing, welcome to the world of weightlifting, right? Um, I should be able to, or any coach should be able to walk up to you in the middle of a snatch or a clean and start asking you questions and you should kind of have an idea of what you're doing, right? It's more than just taking the barbell from the ground and throwing it into the air. I want you to understand what is going on and it's important um, for longevity, for um, your health, right? I think a lot of people who get hurt in weightlifting, it's because they, they don't know what they're doing. They are just worried about taking the barbell from the ground to it's the front rack or the overhead position. And that's dangerous. You should have, you should always be in control of the barbell at all times, right? There's, there's never any floating sensation. There's never a moment where you should not be in control. So um, grab a pen and paper. We'll begin each class with um, a little PowerPoint, some quick notes. Don't worry. Let's see. I only have 10 slides, 10 slides total. I try to keep it as brief and as clean as possible. That way you can jot some notes down. And after this class, you have something to refer back to, right? Uh, I think oftentimes we do, you know, we have these, these classes or technique uh, in any, any movement really. And you might remember bits and pieces of it, but who knows what you remember an hour later, right? And I want you guys to retain as much, as, as, as much of this as possible. So, um, Let's get started. Um, we're going to talk about, it says Tuesday, we're gonna talk about the snatch. Uh, particularly, we're gonna even dive in further. We're gonna talk about the third pool and that's turning over the snatch. And I think that's what a lot of people have the most trouble with. Everyone has pretty good about getting the barbell from the ground to overhead, but when you turn it over, that's when it starts to get a little funky and people um, start to get a little confused. So here we go. All right, so snatch, right? You guys can see this? Someone give me a thumbs up. Can you see my screen? All right, cool. So uh, here's the snatch, specifically delayed or slow third pull. So we're, I, so we're talking something about very specific here now. Um, and so you took the, you have the barbell from the ground, you've given a, an excellent extension, you're in this high pull position. Let's say you miss it. You keep missing at the top position. You can't get underneath it. And this normally happens when it's heavy. Across the board, whether it's in weightlifting or in CrossFit, when you start missing out in front, assuming that everything from the ground to this uh, third pool is correct, if you start missing in that position, it's probably because of this third pool. So the third pool, what is the third pool? Oh, I forgot to change that picture. Oh, there we go. Okay, they're done. Don't look at them. So what is the third pull? Here's a few notes. The third pull is when the lifter actively pulls on the barbell, repositions the body into the receiving position to position the barbell into the overhead position by turning the barbell over with the arms only after, notice that bold, after having completing a full extension of the body in the first and second pulls. So we're not gonna get caught up in the, the first and second pulls right now. We'll save that for later, later, later detail, later classes. Right now it's only the third pool, so don't worry about that. So take a picture of this, take some notes down, whatever you need to do 
to take a look at this later. So again, third pool is when the lifter actively, that's bolded because I think there's a tendency for us to drive, pull, and then you forget. You don't know what's going on. That has to be an active turnover of the barbell. So you'll reposition the body, that's you pulling down into an overhead squat position. Barbell goes behind the head. And you do that by turning over the barbell. And then you lock the arms out. But none of that can happen until you've given a full on triple extension. And that's first and second pulls. We're not gonna worry about that. You guys are really good about that for the most part. All right. I love it. Everyone's taking notes. Some of you I can't see, so you better be taking notes or doing something. Yeah, ah, yeah. <laughs> so I'll give you guys a full minute. So take a look at this, read this, try and understand this. I, I broke it down for you. I mean, I could break this down even further, but this is it at its, this is the third pull at its like minimum, like the, the bare minimum I can describe this as actively pulling on the barbell to pull the body and position, position it underneath the barbell so the barbell can go into the overhead position. And you do all of that by turning the elbows over the arms only after having given a full extension. Okay, so you guys look good. Everyone looks like they have this down. Oh, Lynn's is drinking coffee. I want more coffee. Can you go over the last one after having completely a full extension of the body and the first and second pulls? I'll go over it, but this is I'm going to keep it minimum. So here's here's okay. what that looks like: a full extension. All right, snatch grip, starting position. This is full extension. And then from here, the barbell travels up. And then I turn it over. So that's the first and second pull. First pull is the barbell goes from the ground to the knees. The second pull is from the barbell going to the knees into this full extension here. Again, one more time. First pull, second pull. We're gonna keep it there, because we can go, that, that's a whole other endeavor. We're isolating the third pull, and that's after full extension, and the barbell starts to travel up, and you need to get underneath this barbell, right? So, let's make our way to the third slide. Here are the three phases of a third pull. It's the initial pull down against the barbell. So as the barbell is traveling up, you're going to pull yourself down. Then the turnover. So as you're pulling up and down, the elbows go back and you come underneath. Now suddenly you're underneath the barbell and the barbell's ahead and you're going to push up. So let's see if I can demo that here. Right, so here's, these movements occur after this final extension that I just demoed. So here, so when you're in that position after you've driven from the ground, now the barbell is gonna start to travel up. And this is this, that whole area. So now, full extension, I'm gonna pull myself down. So the barbell's traveling up, I'm gonna pull myself down. I'm gonna turn my elbows around. I'm gonna push up. That is, a, that is a turnover. So this exact movement that I'm doing here is the third pull. Barbell travels up, I'm pulling, pulling. My elbows get to the highest point they can. Pull myself down, elbows turn around, and then I push up. That is the third pull right there. And it's spelled out for you. Initial pull down. Turn over, push up. Let's see, I think we got a question here, let's see. 
Sorry, Javi, continue. I was just saying, like, I don't oh. think I've ever done it correctly. So. Yeah, no, and that's okay, absolutely. So uh, thank, you, thank you for chiming in. So um, if, you, if you have a question or uh, a note or an observation, please, please chime in, because then that means we can talk about it more. I can stand up here and talk your, talk your head off, but you're not gonna, if there's no interaction, it makes it more difficult for, for us to grasp. So uh, Liz mentions that she's never, she felt like she's never uh, done that. And actually that's pretty common. I think most people, are used to just ripping off the ground. And there's a, a joke, I should find that meme, I'll post it on Facebook, but um, it's like, no one really knows what's, what happens. They go from the starting position to they blank out, and suddenly they're under the barbell. But if you ask them, hey, what happened in between all of that? It goes over their head, no idea. And, we, and you don't want that. In weightlifting, you need to know at all times what is occurring, right? Um, if you don't, then that's an, that's an issue. We gotta, we gotta fix that. I thought we were just supposed to say a prayer during the second poll and just- Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, yeah, I mean, that's part of it. I think even if it's light, even if it's heavy, <clears throat> sure, throw that in there. Okay, so let's make our, let's make our way to, um, okay, so we have an idea of what a third pool is the mechanism of how to do a third pull, how do you practice it now, right? That's the, that's the portion that some of the coaches in our, you know, when you're doing a CrossFit class in the warm up, if there's a snatch, we warm you guys up with these movements, but oftentimes you have no idea what they are or what you're doing. You're just following the motions. So here's an opportunity for you to write these three movements down, a tall muscle snatch, a scarecrow snatch, and a tall snatch. Now, starting from the top down, they build on each other. So write these three movements down. These movements you can do with a PVC, a dowel, empty barbell is difficult. For those of you that are familiar with these movements or uh, the lifters or anyone who's been on the platforms, I've had you do a tall snatch before. Or if you take them at the weightlifting seminars, I've done uh, a tall snatch, a scarecrow snatch. They're very difficult just with a barbell alone. You have to have the technique dialed down. Um, and it's, it's always one of the best parts is watching you guys giving you this movement and then watching you guys try to carry it out. And everyone, as soon as they pick up the barbell, they know right away, like, oh, this isn't going to happen. Uh, and so we talk about the third pool. And when you understand what the third pool is, suddenly everything just makes sense. And you, it, it's like a night and day difference. You pick up the barbell after having practice with the PVC and you're like, oh, I totally, I know what's going on now. So the trick would be to practice these movements and then carry these movements over into an actual snatch with weight, right? So yeah, um, remember these three movements are just for us to strengthen the muscles, practice the movements, uh, get, become more comfortable, have a real idea of what we're trying to do here. And then applying it to the snatch is a whole other game, right? Because here we are isolating it, but now you have weight in the barbell, and you need to get to the first pool, the second pool, turn it over. And believe me, um, if you aren't constantly panicking and thinking to yourself as a novice or beginner, or even as an intermediate level, uh, level lifter, like being overwhelmed, then you're probably not doing it right. You should, there are, there's a lot of things to take into consideration here. And it does require you to actively kind of cycle through in your head, like, okay, here, 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 this, that, that, that. Initially, it's overwhelming. It's frustrating, uh, but it should be. Uh, these movements aren't, um, you know, they're not necessarily, there's a, there's a really big buy-in on these. You can't, the other thing I like is when people show up to the platforms and like, oh, I'll just be here for 30 days and I'll get this down. Like, no biggie. And they learn like, oh, no. Yeah, Laura's raising her hand. <laughs> like, no, this is a months and months of practice. And the people who make it look really easy, it's because they put a lot of work into it. So the more agile and fin like the finesse, the more beautiful it looks, it's because they put tons of work in. And that applies to any sport, right? Whether it's CrossFit, powerlifting, um, weightlifting, uh, all the sports out there, when it looks easy, it's because they've done their homework and they've, they've worked their, their butt off. So uh, I'm rambling now, tall muscle snatch. So we're gonna practice here. This is pull up to pull down. Scarecrow snatch is gonna help us turn it over 
And the tall snatch is gonna put all that together and help you lock it out. So look at these, these words here, pull up to pull down, the bolded, turnover, bolded, pull up to pull down, turnover, lock it out. And that's all in here, the three phases of the third pull. So this is the third pull at its, you know, bare minimum here, an explanation. And this is how you put it together. So we're gonna practice these movements uh, today. So don't worry, uh, I know we're like getting into some instructional material here, but we have to. There's no way you can, you can practice these without not knowing what you're doing here. Okay, so let's make our way to the tall muscle snatch. A tall muscle snatch. Here's a few notes on it. It's upper body dominant movement. There's no assistance from the legs. It's all arms. Pull, 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 pull. You're gonna lift the elbows. Let me see if I can, hold on. You're gonna lift your elbows as high as you possibly can to the sides, right? So if this is me snatching, it's here for me. For you, it might be different. Some of us have a better range of motion and those elbows get really high. For others, the shoulders, whether it's the triceps, the, uh, the lats, uh, the delts, if your motion, if your range of motion in the shoulders is restricted, then it might only be here. And that makes it more difficult for you to get under. So the range, shoulder range of motion is vital to weightlifting. Actual, actually, all range of motion in all aspects for weightlifting is integral. Um, that's just part of the game. You have to be very mobile. Um, and your flexibility needs to be pretty good. Uh, the good news is, is that you can work on this, right? This isn't, um, we all have things to work on. So you want those elbows to get as high as possible. See that? Also look at the PVC. Look how close it is, it's touching me. If it's not touching me, then it's pretty close. It's about an inch away from me. When you snatch, whether it's a power snatch, a regular snatch, a snatch variant or accessory movement, that barbell needs to stay really close to you. And how do you keep the barbell close to you? It's with the lats. You have to actively pull the barbell into you. If you aren't actively swooping the barbell in, then you aren't, you aren't keeping it close. You cannot ever let the barbell get away from you. So elbows as high as possible and the shoulder blades squeeze back. That's another important part of this. Oftentimes we're too arm dominant and we're forgetting to activate this back. All right, shoulder blades are squeezed together. Rotate the arms, elbows should maintain their highest position before you turn over. So what does that mean? Here, as I turn over, they stay high. Look at that elbow at its highest position. Stay high, stay high. And then I turn it over. You want to avoid the elbow dipping down before you turn over. So what do, what do I mean by that? Let's see. Uh, here, it's, it's never down, it's back. You don't want this. You see that? That's a, that's a negative. You don't want that. It's not the high. A snatch isn't like this. It's this. Right, turn over, punch up. So tall muscle snatch is going to reinforce that motion. Here's, a, here's what it looks like. I'll play this video for you guys a few times. There's no sound, it's just the video. Look at that, upper body dominant, pulling the barbell to the top. Elbows get nice and high before they turn over, again. Starting position, pull, 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 all the way to the top. Elbows never dip. Get high, turn over. One more time. Boom, there it is. Okay, um, before I proceed, any questions? No, I'm seeing people shaking their head. No, no. Good, good. All right, nice. Chime in. Feel free to chime in if you, if you have any thoughts. All right, let's make our way to the scarecrow snatch. Again, we're practicing all these movements, so jot these notes down. Um, that way you can 
physically practice them here and then you can refer back to your notes and have an idea of what it is you're trying to achieve. So a scarecrow snatch. Uh, again, take a look at that. Lift elbows to their highest position out to the sides. You're gonna see a lot of trends here. Uh, a lot of repetition. Um, they're all trying to achieve kind of the same thing. They're just isolating specific um, points within the third pool. So uh, elbows high to their highest position. Oh, barbell's still close. I'm using my lats to keep it in. Aggressive, aggressively lift and transition the feet into the receiving position. Turn the bar over into the overhead position. Lock the elbows out. At the same time, the feet connect to the floor and you control the barbell down into an overhead squat. I have a demo after this, so don't worry. So now we're still not using our legs. The legs aren't being used here. This is still upper body dominant, right? Because it's the arms, it's the upper body musculature that help you get underneath the barbell. Uh, this is just going to be us getting into that third pool, that moment just before you turn it over. So this is very difficult with an empty barbell. Um, I use uh, almost entirely a PVC or a training bar. And if I'm feeling really good, then I pull the empty barbell out. But that's, that's rare. Um, it, put, it just puts a lot of pressure on the shoulders. And you'll see the movement, what it's being asked, what you're being asked to do. So again, elbows nice and high to the side. I'm gonna turn my, oh, let's talk about this receiving position here. Um, transition the feet into the receiving position. Okay, for those of you that have never been on a platform and have only done the snatch uh, in a CrossFit environment, oftentimes your feet stay fixed in a position. And that makes sense, right? Because it's high volume. You're trying to rep out these power snatches. You don't have time for the feet to be doing, moving out and doing their thing. That takes a lot of time. That's costing you reps. In weightlifting, I'm teaching you weightlifting 101 here. Those feet need to, the feet need to get on their, you need to get on your toes for full extension. And then when you turn the barbell over, they land at the same time. And that's all that slapping you here on the platform, that pop, 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 pop. That's you moving the feet up. You've driven so hard a moment you're kind of momentarily off the ground if you've driven you know exceedingly hard and then you have to get the feet back down aggressively you can't leisurely let them fall down because you want to lock the, the arms out and get the feet down at the same time right and you hear that in weightlifting over and over so here's that demo scarecrow snatch Gets that barbell up into that high pull position, turns it over, rides it down. Take a look at his feet. Look where he starts off at and look where they end up at. Boom, they move out. He opens his, his legs up so that his hips can go further down into a squat position. One more time. This is good. Of course it is, I, I picked it. Okay, so toes, okay. For full extension, you're gonna be on your toes. And then when you snap, your feet is flat on the ground. Yes, yep, yep, yep. On full extension, absolutely, you want those toes. Uh, in this scarecrow snatch, this example, he's staying flat-footed. It keeps it simple. There are more, um, difficult movements that would require you to be on your toes and in this, this position. We're not gonna take it that far, uh, but yes, absolutely. One more time, look at his feet. He gets on the toes briefly and then they land back down flat. And that needs to happen very quickly. Right now it's empty barbell, so he's being kind of soft about it, but if, there was, if this was a true snatch, he would not be that soft about it. Okay, for our last movement, and then we're gonna get moving around. Uh, a tall snatch. So the tall snatch is the, um, all, everything kind of tied together, right? So again, aggressively lift and transition the feet into the receiving position, pulling the elbows up to their highest position, turn the barbell over into the overhead position, you're gonna control it down. So this one 
It's different from the scarecrow snatch because the scarecrow snatch, you're here. The tall snatch, you begin in your power position. Not your power position, the, the barbell is in the hips. It's not the power position. So here. This is a, you begin a tall snatch here. Tall snatch is in the hips. Scarecrow is here. Muscle snatch also begins in the hips, right? So muscle snatch is from here. Scarecrow snatch is from here. Tall snatch is back down at the hips. So jot these notes down quickly. Again, it's all very repetitive. Just been small, there's some small differences here. My, uh, one of my weightlifting, uh, I guess I have quite a few, but someone I look up to uh, who's been in the weightlifting realm, coaching, uh, coaching realm is uh, Greg Everett from Catalyst Athletics. Uh, I have his book. I know Laura recently just bought his book, but that is, uh, go to YouTube and check out his videos. Uh, for the lifters on the platforms, the weightlifting team, Everything that I assigned to them, the demo is from Catalyst Athletics because he's just so straight to the point, concise, not a whole lot of fluff. Oh, here, here, do this, do that. Uh, he's for a lifter that probably has a little more experience. He's not necessarily for one for a, like a, a, a novice weightlifting. But if you ever have a question about what a movement should look like, I bet you Greg Everett from Catalyst Athletics has it posted on YouTube. Check him out. Okay, so um, here's that movement. This is what a tall snatch looks like. Oh, here he is. This is the man right here, tall snatch. This is Greg Everett. So he starts at the hips. He pulls himself under into an overhead squat, overhead receiving position, right? Again. So you see how it's all building on, it, on, it, on itself now? It's like, here he is. Oh, I can't scrub through it, that's a bummer. Uh, one more time. He pulls, there's no leg here, it's all upper body. He pulls the barbell up, over, locks it out, rides it down. One more time. Cool. For the for the neck and head part, can you talk about that? Like neck and head part? What, 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 yeah, what is, it, is it, so uh, you automatically gonna go, the barbell's gonna go up, right? So is there a problem of going too forward or not? Oh yeah, absolutely. Um, hmm, let me see how, I will say, uh, let's see if I can demo how close that barbell should be. In this video, it's difficult to show because I can't really scrub through it and slow it down. I'll see if I can do that in the future. But take a look at this. If when I'm coming down for a snatch, look how, um, look how close it gets. Let me see here. So pretend I'm coming down. It's, where is that? You see, the, you see that? It's very, very close to my forehead. Mm -hmm. So if you, you need to stay upright. So we always, the cue in weightlifting is chest up. So chest up. Let's see if I can slow-mo this. All right. Oh, here, this is better. You see that? Yeah. So you um, ask JB, I know JB's recently banged his forehead. I know a few of you have, I certainly have. The barbell stays so close. Uh, so close to you that if you dive down, if you dive forward, the barbell is going to nick you right in the forehead. It'll hit. Um, so you need to stay upright, chest up, neck neutral, so the barbell can come right here. It has to stay very close. 
if it's looping out, you don't want any looping out. That's a whole other endeavor too. We can get into that, but that's, that's, uh, let's see. <laughs> if it's not feel good, it will leave a mark. It will. <laughs> I think I had a scar for a while too. Um, but hey man, you gotta keep it close. And you still gotta make that lift too. I don't care if the barbell slams you in the nose and it's broken and you're bleeding, you better stick that lift. <laughs> Something I always tell the weightlifters is you, uh, you got to sell it, especially when you're competitive and you're on the platform. If you ever give any indication in the face that you weren't happy with the lift and there's a small reason for them to think that it wasn't a good lift, they're going to go off how you sold it. So if you looked unsure about yourself, then it's a no lift. You got to sell it. So a good habit is um, if you know, obviously if the barbell is going to come down onto you because you couldn't lock it out or, you know, something that's going to cause you harm and you need to get out of the way, then absolutely get out of the way. And that comes with more experience. The more lifting you do, the more you know, like, oh, oh, that's, I can't get that. That's not going to happen. And others where you're kind of like, oh, it was a little sloppy, but I'm still going to secure the lift. It's good practice for you. Um, I, and I guess on that note, something uh, I want you guys to start doing is uh, you can't do this in a wad, right? Because there's just too much going on. You don't have time to stop and think. Uh, you need to keep it very simple. Like, uh, just give yourself basic cues. But if you're, if they're, uh, I know Coach Dex has been giving us more like weightlifting, strength-oriented movements. And you only get about 15, 20 minutes to, to do these snatches and cleans. That's your opportunity to really slow things down and think about your lifting. Um, was that a good lift? Was it a bad lift? Why was it a good lift? Uh, that's your time to start hitting those cues. Where were my elbows at? Uh, how close was the barbell? Why wasn't the barbell close to me? You could go on and on and on with that. And it's, it's necessary. And that applies to anything, right? If you want to get good at something, you have to start question. You have to start asking yourself questions and having an internal dialogue about what it is you're trying to achieve. If you're not asking yourself questions, um, you probably really have no idea what's going on. And we, we don't want that. So, um, Let's, uh, let's get moving now. We have a few minutes here. Uh, one more note. We, um, I gave you these notes because I want you guys to do this you know, kind of stuff on your own, right? This, this is nice, this interface we have going here. But the truth is, is you're gonna, if you're going to get better at this, and you got to do this stuff on your own too. Again, keep it PVC. It doesn't have to be so serious. So um, let's, uh, let's do a quick, um, a quick minute of jumping jacks. So everyone on your feet. I want to see, we got to get the heart rate up. Let's get you moving around. Let's get the, let's get the brain thinking. And then make sure you have your PVC or your broomstick or your, uh, what's, what's the thing in Harry Potter called? The Nimbus 2000. Nimbus 2000. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So everyone on their feet, let me take a quick look here. Here we go, ready, steady, and go. Just a quick minute. We just want that heart rate elevated before we start working with some explosive movement. You don't think I did enough jumping jacks today? Yeah. <laughs> no, jumping jacks, never. Especially for you, Nan, we got to slow you down. 30 seconds. Team 30 points. Can't be having it. That's not me. That's the other iPad. 15 seconds. Three, two, one, relax. All right, immediately into five inchworms with the push up.
followed by 10 air squats with a, a, a pretty mellow tempo there. Control it. Control that descent. Squeeze the glutes. Drive out of the hole. <clears throat> And then from here, you have five jumping air squats for height. I want to see that with what we call triple extension, ankles, knees, and hips fully extend. And that's, we're not really utilizing triple extension today, but you need to start thinking about it. So we're going for height, five jumping air squats. Higher the better. All right, good. Okay, let's uh, grab your grab your your uh, your PVC, your barbell, whatever you're using. If you're using a barbell, um, let's see. No, good. Everyone's, oh, April with the broom. Miho with the broom. <laughs> That's right. You can literally clean while cleaning. Oh, we're not cleaning. You're snatching, but you know what I mean. Get some, get some extra work in. All right. So we're going to work on, uh, on the tall snatch. Let me see. So let me get a, uh, here we go. So tall snatch, tall muscle snatch, excuse me. So uh, here's a quick demo, just to remind you. Let's start off with five reps. Don't overthink it. Five reps, and let me see, I'm gonna try and get as much people in. Let me see if I can see everyone. Good, remember those elbows, stay high, and they continue to stay high. At no point should that elbow drop. High, pull to the top. Oh good, everyone looks great. Cool. Let's do another set of five. Go for another set of five. Let me take a look. It's PVC. Elbows high, good, nice. Good, Kay, looking good, Elaine. Good, Jessica. Step in, good. All right, cool. This is it. So PVC feels a little, or you know, this dowel, whatever you're using, feels a little silly. But again, if you can't make this look good, then you don't, you don't need a barbell in your hands at all. Right? Um, let's, uh, let's move forward. Let's just take it to the uh to the the scarecrow snatch now so now you understand how to take this instrument pull to the top all the way to the top right so elbows high now let's work on the turning over portion and this is where it gets a little funky this is the part okay. where um hello have, go ahead oh i have a question in that first one are you like just standing up and holding it or are you in like the power position do you have a slight bend no, you were, your first observation was correct. You're just standing tall, legs are locked out. We want the upper body to take care of all this, right? Okay. Good question. Any other questions? What did, any notes, any observations? What do you guys think about the movement? Pretty good, right? Yeah. Liz? So that one was the tall snatch, right? Called no. muscle snatch. Oh, muscle snatch. Okay. Yeah. So can you imagine now? picking up a barbell that's 35, 45 pounds, and now you need to pull it to the top. Pretty, yeah. pretty difficult. Okay, muscle snatch. So if you pick up a barbell and you feel like um, that's just not, that's just not- Gonna working. happen? 
<laughs> yeah, but you feel it. You, you'll know it. You'll know as soon as you pick it up and you get into this position and you start, maybe you're like, oh, you start to squirm. Like, oh, I, don't, I don't know if I can do this. Then take it to a training bar. Go to 15 pounds. Um, and remember in weightlifting, technique is everything. So if whatever's on the barbell isn't allowing you to practice the movement in its correct form, then it's a no-go. And um, since we're on that topic, and most of you do the watts, yeah, I'm looking at all of you. Uh, <laughs> if you are in the middle of a workout, and even if RX, performance or fitness weights, even if the fitness weight isn't working for you, then by all means, take it further down. Find an in-between weight, go lower. Um, hell, maybe for some of you, if you got the form down and you're feeling good, and you got the form down, there's the key words right there, right? Then go a little heavier, add some more weight on it. Um, but you should always be doing your best to practice um, that form. Um, <clears throat> don't, don't ever look desperate for, it never looks good on you, believe me. You, know, you guys know I'm watching you. So, um, I have any, a any question. Other questions? It was, oh, sorry. A hand placement on the, good. On the bar? Good. Good question. Uh, a snatch grip. So, what does what snatch grip mean? Snatch grip is a width that will allow the barbell to be in the hip socket, in, in this crease, this hip right here. So, take a look. So you want it right there. How you know you're in there is if I bend my knees and it falls perfectly in that little crevice. And so that, so obviously, so this is too high, right? This is nowhere near that hip crevice. This is too low. This is a clean. So I'm gonna go wider, wider until it falls into that hip crevice. So that's different for everyone. The taller you are, the longer your limbs are, the tall men and women, their arms are like nearly all the way toward the end. I'm looking at Alex. I'm looking at, who am I looking at here? Yeah, 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 April. Yeah, if you're tall, it gets wider and wider. Adam, I know Adam got those long ass legs, not, excuse me, long arms and legs. Um, okay, so um, let's move forward. We're at 530 here. We got 15 minutes. We might finish a little early, but that's fine. We're still trying to get the feel of this. So uh, the scarecrow snatch. Here's a quick demo again. So this is us in that high pull position. Feet are going to stay flat. We're not going to get fancy here. So remember in this the scarecrow position, my elbows are at their highest position, right? And my shoulder blades are what? They're squeezed back. And that's important. Don't rely just on the delts and the arms. Let's involve that back, right? We, got, we have strong posteriors, let's, let's utilize it. So eyes on me real quick, this is what it looks like. It has to be quick. It has to be precise, smooth, all of that. You hear my feet moving? It's because they're moving out. So I can get wider. How wide? Um, about a foot's worth, right? So if my feet begin here, then I'm gonna open up about that much. Obviously, the taller you are, the wider you probably need to go uh, to get the hips down into that squat position. So I'm gonna give you 30 seconds to have at it, go for it, play around with it, become familiar with the movements. I'm gonna watch you and see what I can see here. Good, remember elbows stay high, keep them high. At no point should that elbow dip. Where are your lats? Are your lats being used here? They should be. Well, we wanna keep that PVC close. Are you utilizing your back? Are the scaps touching? Couple more. And relax. Okay. So 
we're going to do a few together. I'm going to try and I'm going to do my best to kind of look at all of you at the same time. So I'm going to cue you. Here are your cues. Starting position is here. And in that time, I'm going to pause about two seconds. I want you to think, where are my elbows? Is my back active? Also, let's worry about those two things right there. And then I'll say go. Actually, let's not even say go. I'll say turn. The cue is turn. And that's you to go here to here. Elbows back. Drop underneath. Move your feet. And punch up. You're gonna ride it all the way down. Again, I'm looking for it to be crisp, smooth, show me control. Show me you know, not that you know, but you're thinking. I need to see, I need to see the wheels turning here. Here we go. Starting position. Turn. Cool, good. Ride it down all the way into a full squat. Starting position. Turn. Good. Again, starting position. Turn. Last one. Last one here. Make it look good. Don't mind me recording you. Starting position. Turn. And recover. Good. Okay. Uh, set that down. Adam, you continue. Do your thing. Get a few reps in. Any, any questions? What do we think about this movement? Can you imagine this with an empty barbell? Yeah. It's very difficult. So in this scarecrow snatch, it's important, uh, again, that you stay on the lighter side. PVC, dowel, um, training bar, until you are familiar with the movement and you can uh, kind of, you know, uh, I don't know if deserve is the right, yeah, maybe in weightlifting it is, right? You need to, you need to work for it. Um, any questions before we, we move on? So that's a scarecrow snatch. Again, take notes. Um, I hope you took notes. These movements can be done you can come in prior to class, a wad, let's say the wad has you snatching, get in here, move around, practice these three movements. They will do wonders for you in the future, but you, you gotta stick with it. This isn't a one and done deal. So uh, let's, let's go to tall snatch now. Tall snatch is us connecting all that together, right? So um, here, here's, that, uh, here's that movement. Here's tall snatch. So snatch grip. It's in that hip crease. I'm gonna stand tall. And from there, I'm gonna initiate the movement by pulling with my arms, getting to this, the scarecrow position. And then I'm gonna drop underneath, lock it out, ride it down, and recover. Here it is. So I'm using all those things we just worked on. My lats are keeping the PVC close. My elbows are getting to their highest position. My back is squeezing. I'm gonna turn it over. I wanna lock these elbows out and punch my feet back down to the floor and punch up at the same time. Ride it down, control, control, ride it up. So same cues, starting position is here. Um, I won't say turn, I'll say go this time. Go, because I want you to be pretty aggressive with this. Starting position, go. Now, in the other movements, the same thing applies, but more so in this tall snatch. Any, any variant of a snatch, or even a clean. Elbows need to be turned out to the sides. Again, elbows turned out to the side. 
So here's, here's the barbell. Here's my elbows turned out to the side. When the elbows are turned out to the side, it helps the barbell go straight up. Again, so take a look. This is me relaxed. Elbows, this is bad. This is bad form because then the PVC, because then your arms go back. And we don't want that. We want this. So it helps to have the elbows turned out to the side. So here we go. Let's do a few together. Starting position. Elbows out to the side. Go. Good. Back to starting position. Ready? Go. And your legs are locked out in this position. Remember, we're just, we're trying to, we want the arms, the upper body musculature to do its thing. Ready? Go. Good. Okay. This next one. Um, it's probably a little more difficult with such light weight. So when you're in the gym and you have a barbell and weight, I want you to take a look at where your foot, your foot, your feet are at, your footing. You never want to jump forward and you never want to jump backward. So here's a little side note. You should stay in place. Your feet merely from the starting position, move out to the side. That's your first indication. If you're jumping forward or backward, that something is a, a is, awry in your movement. You need to start asking yourself, why am I jumping forward? Why am I jumping backward? So this next one, take a look at where your, 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 your feet are at. And let's see what happens here. Ready? Go. Take a look down. Did you jump forward? Did you jump backward? Again, ready? Go. And relax. All right, it's 5.40. We have five minutes to discuss this. Uh, before I unmute everyone, these movements, uh, again, should stay on the lighter side of, of weight. Um, you should do sets of three to five of three reps. Three reps in weightlifting is the magic number. It's the moment, it allows you to maintain form just before fatigue sets in and you're not really getting the intended stimulus of the movement. So uh, warming up or whether you're practicing, it's three to five sets of three reps. Anything more, uh, you're kind of, uh, it should be more specific to the coach and the coach should know why they're assigning you that, that, that much movement. Uh, so let's, uh, let's unmute you guys. I wanna hear um, what you guys are thinking. Okay, you're unmuted. Don't say anything crazy. <laughs> Thoughts about the movements? I think it's a nice focus on fundamentals again, right? It's easy to yeah. forget some of this stuff. And so... Oh, but, yeah, yeah. It's always the fundamentals. Fundamentals, we, you need them. Uh, especially because in our environment, we're kind of always rapidly firing. Go, 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 go. And we forget yeah. about the small things. And then they're important. It, it, yeah, it's just easy to move in the CrossFit workouts when you're cycling stuff. It's easily, easy just to kind of forget a lot of this stuff, right? Because there's it's all about technique, as you're saying. And so it's easy to start rounding your back and just muscling it up when you're having to cycle. Yeah. Anything else? <laughs> so um, I get a little bit scared to keep the barbell really close because I hit my nose a couple of times. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what I do wrong, but... Um, you're know. probably getting your faith forward. That's going to be my first... Uh, that'd be my first thought. Um, okay. Probably not related to the movement itself. But one of two things are going on. You're either getting forward here and you should be a neutral neck or mm -hmm. you are your wrist probably somehow as you're coming up you're bringing it into your face with your maybe you're too much lat or your the wrist is broken and now you're doing this 
So there could I'd have to I'd have to watch you, but those are my, my first the first thoughts off the top of my head. So the wrist has to be neutral. Yeah, you want you want a stacked wrist. You're pulling. The only time the wrist starts to break is when you turn over. A little bit of bend, depending upon you. Uh, for me, I know it's a little, I get a little crazy. I do something like this. But if you can maintain a, a neutral wrist as much as possible, right? Stack, that's okay. probably, that's better for the wrist. Okay, okay. Yeah, I think that's so like a good question though. Now, so now you have to put this into practice and start paying attention to how you're moving, where's my neck, what does my wrist look like? Start asking yourself questions. Okay. What about um, knees? So like in class, when we start from a low hang or the ground, I've been bashing my knees a lot, trying to keep the, similarly, trying to keep the bar close to my body. Yeah. Um, so. so that comes with, okay, my, um, the knees immediately from the starting position, which is the ground, the knees need to go back and out to the sides. You have okay. to get them out of the way. All right, like a squat, mm -hmm. like out to the side. Uh, yes. Sort of. yeah, yeah, well, no, no, not exactly. But here, just let me demo. Let's see if we can take a look at this. So quickly, um, watch, watch how my knees move. Okay. From the starting position, the knees are going forward, right? So they do it. Chains are slanted forward. Vertical. Push out to the side. Again. Here. 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 Okay. So as soon as the barbell comes off the floor, knees mm -hmm. go back and out okay. to the side. Okay. And then if you're still grazing it after that, that comes with technique over time. Um, on nearly every weightlifter um, yeah. has scraped shins because you're trying to, what's too close, what's too far, you got to find the fine line. It's very, yeah. it should not be grazing you. Yeah, some of the weightlifters are like, oh, even mine are jacked up from years of trying to get it right. Any other question? This um, extension you were talking about, sort of like the, like a tricep, Flex. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Is that what it's kind of like? Um, what was a, a little more? Give me more detail on that. What are you, what are you asking? So instead of being uh, relaxed, you wanted um, sort of like you're bending it, right? Is that what it should be like to keep it close to you? Um, no, you're using your lats. Uh, a good description of that, uh, one of my favorites is, you know when, you open, when the, a window that opens from uh, top to bottom, when you're pulling down? Yeah. That's that motion. It's this motion. So uh, another way to practice this is, let me see, look at my hands. I'm pushing down on this. On this. That's me utilizing my lats. The same applies to the barbell. You need to... By pushing down, pushing back, the last are active. So it's not out this way, it's in this way or that way? Oh no, the elbow position, you're right. The elbows are out to the side. Right. It's out to the side. And then you pull in. You see that? Elbows out. Uh-huh. Pull in. Like That's how you keep the barbell close. And oh. the hand grip is, I don't know how. Dependent upon, for the snatch, is dependent upon uh, your height and your arm length. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, Kay, you're, you have some fairly long limbs, so I'm going to say it's a pretty wide for you. Javi, on those elbows, are they more externally or internally rotated? It's external. That is an external rotation, right? Because this would be internal, this is external. Okay. Thanks. Yeah. I would think it's internal. Is it internal? What do you think? You tell me. No, it's external. It's external. It in, so I would think it's internal. internal. But anyway, internal. it looks like that. <laughs> Internal, external. I'm going to go with external. I think it's external. <laughs> uh, the elbow should be facing out. That's, that's your cue. 
but yeah, your rotation is going in. No, it's not going in. Well, you have to rotate it towards you internally for your elbows to come out, no? It's external. Anyway, tomato, oh, tomato. Carl says it's internal. Okay. I think... Um, my my yeah, husband says it's internal. Out. This this motion right here, that's internal rotation. So when you when you're going this way, that's internal rotation. My husband says it's internal. Okay, there you guys go. Oh, and Debbie, Debbie's husband's uh, Cairo. He's, he knows his thing. External, okay, cool. Internal. So internal. Now cool. I'm also a doctor. What <laughs> <laughs> kind of doctor? <laughs> Noted. Internal. Uh, so it's 5.48. Um, this was a great turnout. Nice work, guys.